All right, good afternoon, everyone. Sorry about that. I was trying to get to the right screen again. <laughs> um, welcome and thanks for joining us today. I have um, a very familiar face. I have Chris Zurich, who is our project coordinator for Missouri SAD. Thanks for joining me today, Chris. Always a pleasure to be here. So as you may know, hopefully you know since you're here, Chris did a week-long series on chapter management for our SAD chapters here in Missouri. And so we thought we would hop on today and do a little question and answer. So um, while we're waiting for people to get on, um, I'm going to go through a couple questions and then I'll monitor and see if anyone other has anyone out there has questions that they've typed in the chat box. Um, so we'll start with some that were emailed to us. So the first question is, is what would you say to an advisor at a small school who cannot seem to get students motivated to participate? Well, getting students is always a challenge. And when it comes to membership organizations like SAD, you really need students to make them successful. SAD's entire mission is to deliver content through peer-to-peer -peer education. So you have to have those students willing to speak to students. Um, and especially in a small school where students are really busy all the time, it can sometimes be hard to get a few students involved. But I would recommend to attempt to get started uh, two different strategies. One is you can go for some of those top achieving students and try to just start really, really small with what SAD maybe can accomplish for the year and not focus on really, really large projects, but try to start super small, maybe just some activities you can do in your local school. The other thing that you can do is try to partner with other organizations that maybe have similar um, goals or missions. Um, organizations like FCCLA that many of you might have has a program called FACTS, F-A-C-T-S, and it's a traffic safety program. So you might be able to actually use your uh, SAD chapter programming within maybe other organizations or maybe National Honor Society or something along those lines in your school to maybe get a few students started and motivated. And remember, there's no fee to be in SAD this year, so it's really easy, there's no barriers. So hopefully you can leverage that as well. Great, and I know a lot of times some of um, the registered substance use prevention coalitions in Missouri also have a youth component, and a lot of times they'll register their SAD, their kids in this, as a SAD chapter too, because they're already doing the work. So you might as well get your free content with it once Definitely. it comes across. So totally agree. Yeah. Okay. Well, I looked. No questions yet, so we'll just keep down the email list here. Um, I'm concerned about all the projects and figuring out all of the details. Any advice? Uh, well, SAD does have a lot of projects. And as we probably, probably went through these weeks, or uh, this week's recorded videos, you may have felt a little bit overwhelmed about everything that there is. And when you go in and download those toolkits, it might be 30 or 40 pages long. So we totally understand that you might feel overwhelmed. I think the important thing is to remember to just start small and take it piece by piece. You're not expected when you get into these toolkits and you get into these projects and programs that SAD has to do every single element to a T. It's totally fine to take one little piece and get started. Kind of similar to the first question that we had, start local, start small and work your way up. Just because everything is available to you doesn't mean that you have to use everything. So try and try and focus on starting small. When it comes to building out your chapter as well, um, maybe starting small there isn't a bad idea either. Uh, get a couple of members, maybe just meeting once a month, once every six weeks, um, and try to focus just on a small project. You can also kind of look at it around the time of year and say, maybe what our SAD chapter is going to do is focus on prom safety or graduation safety. And you can really focus all of your work on taking small incremental steps to getting to that bigger project at the end. So it's a little bit less daunting for you. Kind of like building an outline to a project. You build an outline first and then you work your way through piece by piece by piece. And then you finally have a 15, 20 page report at the end. That's the same thing you can do with SAD. Do it piece by piece by piece, do the research, get the students involved, and then you'll be okay when it comes time for your project. And just to clarify, um, with hearing you answer those two questions, like there's no set amount of meetings, like you don't have to have a monthly meeting, you don't have to do like three campaigns throughout the year, it's just whatever your SAD chapter decides. 
exactly. You can customize that experience to your own school's needs. We'll have chapters that meet once a week. We'll have chapters that meet once a month. We may have chapters that only meet twice a semester. It's totally fine, whatever you need to do uh, in order to get your SAD chapter up and running. And this year, especially, we know things are different as we're getting back in the groove of in-person functions and programming. So we know it's going to be different and we're here to help however we can. Great. Okay. Um, I checked again. No, no questions yet. So we'll just keep rocking and rolling with the online ones or the email ones, excuse me. Um, the next one that says my students are already in every organization at my school. So they are having trouble juggling another. What might I do to make it easier on them without adding work to my already busy schedule? <sighs> Students love to be involved, <laughs> and we're, we're glad that they do want to be involved, but I would venture to say that the students that you're looking at for your SAD chapter are probably also in band, also mm -hmm. in football, also in a few AP classes, maybe have a job. Um, they're busy, um, they're, and we, we fully know that going into this. So there's a few strategies you can use to make things a little bit easier on students. And we talked about some of these in our webinars. Uh, you can do meetings in the evening, thanks to Zoom um, and the great use of technology that we've all gotten so used to now. We've seen great success with SAD programs and other student organization programs hosting evening meetings on Zoom. So students don't have to stay after school. They don't have to worry about transportation with their parents. They don't have to come early and potentially miss a bus. None of that has to happen when you do it virtually. So we've seen success with that. We've also seen chapters that are able to leverage technology like Google Groups, uh, which can create like an online forum and email distribution, and most schools have access to the Google suite. To be able to communicate and have kind of regular chapter function and meeting without actually having to engage in a full scale meeting. So they're able to really plan and coordinate everything without sitting down for an hour or two. Now over all of this, the important thing to remember is that you can have a short meeting. It's absolutely fine. Meet over lunch, have a, a lunch and learn, and have the students grab their lunch from the school cafeteria, come to your classroom and sit down and have their sad meeting there, or even in the lunchroom. And you can talk it over that way and break it up so you can make use of time that um, otherwise would just be kind of hangout time. You can fill it with some sad programming so you don't take those students out of anything more. Now, we certainly want those students still. We know they're busy. We just have to meet them where they are. And there are always alternatives to figuring that out. Yeah, that's great. Those are good ideas. All right. Our next email question is, I'm interested in using Rock the Belt, but October is already so busy. Can we do it any time of the year? Absolutely. We talked in our recorded sessions this week about how certain programs that SAD has developed do have recommended times that you host them. Rock the Belt is always going to coincide with National Teen Driver Safety Week, which is always in mid to late October. That's early in the school year for some schools. We had schools that didn't start until the middle of September. So it's really hard to maybe dive in and imagine doing a big project like that. You can absolutely customize the project and do it whenever you want to. Maybe you want to use Rock the Belt's programming to talk about traffic safety around prom and those students who are maybe um, out later than normal. Use the programming then. Host it in January, maybe in a more quiet time. Talk about the icy roads and the risks mm -hmm. associated with those and how wearing a seatbelt can prevent uh, death and serious injury. You can customize the program to fit your needs. Just because you pass a certain date doesn't mean that you can't participate in the program. They're all available to you. Those recommended times just coincide with usually state or national events that are similar to SADS programs. So they just really fit perfectly to host them when maybe there's already some media attention going on. I love the flexibility that all of this programming offers. It makes it easy for our, our youth to do these things. So our last question on email is, our SAD chapter has nearly 75 members. They all want to be involved, so we need more committees. What other ideas do you have for committees our chapter can use? This is one of those great problems to have that we never want to complain about, right? <laughs> we have too many students, and they all want to do everything uh, with us. And that's absolutely great to have that many students that want to be actively involved. 
But when you have all those students who want to be a leader, it can be hard when maybe you only have a few leadership positions. You know, if you followed our training, maybe you only have four leadership positions. So you want to maybe leverage committees to get more students involved. That's a perfectly fine way to do things. You can create committees to really accomplish any task. Most of you are probably in some sort of a professional association, uh, whether it's a, a Kiwanis club in your community, uh, maybe you're on a, you know, a union board, it could be anything, a school board. All of those organizations, no matter what, are going to have to divvy up work somehow to get it accomplished. And they're gonna use committees to do that. You can break apart your work as much as you need to to get those students involved. But I will caution you, the more that you divvy up work, the more hands that are in the same pot. So it can get a little bit daunting. So only having so many committees is probably still a recommendation I would give. Um, maybe you do have three, four or five committees, but if your goal is to get the best students involved, you'll get those on those committees. Don't create committees just to make sure all 75 of your members all sit on a committee uh, because nothing will get accomplished in the manner that you think when they maybe are only tasked with, your job is to create invitations. You're our invitations committee. They'll have such a small job that they won't feel that they have contributed value. Whereas if you put them on an event planning committee, they'll get to work on invitations and maybe the uh, actual programming that happens and looking at maybe food for an event that you're doing for parents after school one day. They'll get more out of the experience. And while we'll still accomplish SAD's program, no matter how many committees you have, we also need to focus on developing those skills for those students, those leadership and workplace skills. So we need to make sure we create value in our committees and not just break up work for the sake of breaking up work. Great. Well, those are all the questions we have. No one in the audience has any. So what we'll do is we'll put email in the comments and Chris is always available. I am too, um, to take questions. So feel free. Hopefully this was helpful to kind of tie the whole series together on chapter management. And like I said, this is going to be up, come and watch it. And if you have questions, drop us an email. Thanks Definitely. so much for joining me today, Chris. Always. Thank you so much.